Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm on the banks of the Hudson River in New Jersey, right across the river from New York City, from Manhattan. And today, well actually for the next three days, we're gonna be going on the official Anthony Bourdain New Jersey food trail. Bison tomahawk steak. Oh, wow. There are 10 places to go throughout New Jersey. Some of Anthony Bourdain's favorite places that he included on his Parts Unknown New Jersey episode. And although Anthony Bourdain, I believe he was born in New York City, he grew up and lived most of his years within New Jersey. Wow. We're gonna begin this three-day food tour right now. Oh, some hot dogs are in my very near future. Anthony Bourdain said that to know Jersey is to love her. And to be honest with you, I do not know Jersey at all. I don't think I've ever even been to Jersey other than I have flown into Newark Airport a couple of times. But other than that, I've never really explored New Jersey. So this is gonna be totally different for me and a huge learning experience. Anthony Bourdain, he inspired so many of us to travel to get a little bit out of our comfort zone or a lot of out of our comfort zone even throughout his humor and sarcasm he had this incredible ability to connect with others and to show respect to their food to their culture to their ideas so for the next three days it's an actual official Anthony Bourdain New Jersey food trail. Everywhere that's included was featured on the Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown New Jersey episode. There's 10 places to go all the way from, well, we're starting in Fort Lee all the way down the coast of Jersey to Camden. We're gonna eat everything on the Anthony Bourdain New Jersey food trail. So this is gonna be three days, but three full videos. So make sure you sit back, make sure you relax, grab some food, grab some snacks, and we're in for a lot of historical, incredibly delicious diner, culinary experiences, legendary restaurants in New Jersey. We're beginning the tour in Fort Lee, just across the Hudson River from New York City, and we're starting at Hiram's, which is Anthony Bourdain's favorite hot dog. They specialize in deep fried hot dogs since 1932. My happy place. Sometimes I just need that old time flavor, you know? Hello, good morning. Thank you. got the hot dogs. You just order at the front, you get your hot dogs, and then you they have some bar counter seats, and then they have some, some tables set up in here too. But we got two different hot dogs. Um, these are deep fried hot dogs in New Jersey. They often call them rippers, deep fried hot dogs, because they tear once they deep fry, they kind of explode down the center and rip that skin. I'm gonna try the chili dog. Add a little bit of mustard. Oh, that looks like good mustard too and just feel, you could just feel that hot dog. I mean, just look at the, the casing. Oh, the bun is so soft as soon as you pick that up. And if you look at the casing on that hot dog, because it's deep fried, it's all crinkly. It exploded with that ripper down the center. Uh, the chili on there, the bun is so incredibly soft. Anthony Bourdain called these the finest hot dogs in the land. Now that is an amazing hot dog. Oh yeah, when it's deep fried like that. Yeah, it's so incredibly juicy. The wrinkly, crispy skin, the juicy hot interior. As soon as you bite down, it just juices with that hot dog oil. The chili, which just gives it a little bit of a, an extra flavor. And I love mustard. Oh, with that mustard, it's amazing. So the bun feels like it's steamed, but then toasted on the inside. So you got that crispy edge, but the outside is so incredibly pillowy and soft. I'm gonna add some relish, which I think the relish is only on the, the bar counter. Mm -hmm. 
But she only have relish on the communal bar counter table, not on the, the seating tables. Mm. With the mustard, with that chili, with the sweet relish. Let's try the fries. Fries served with toothpicks. Mm. Really good fries served unsalted, so I, oh yeah, you can add salt. But actually, I like, I like unsalted fries. You really taste the flavor of the potato and that crunch. I like that mustard a lot. Yeah, that is a seriously quality hot dog. One of the best hot dogs I've ever had. That last bite is the best when all the toppings are oozing out the back. And that back skin of the hot dog, which is the crispiest, and which just snaps with juiciness. Thank you very much. All right, have a great day. Thank you, have a great day. Uh, Mark Weems. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Wow, that was an extraordinary hot dog, to say the least, so good. <laughs> so comforting, so warming, and that, that, yeah, the ripper style where it's deep fried, that casing was delicious. From here, we're driving down the Jersey coast to a place called Long Beach Island to eat some seafood. And I think it's gonna be about a two hour drive. Passing by, you can see skyscrapers in the distance in Manhattan. Then this like just huge network of rivers and waterways and bridges and buildings, just the expanse and then highways, turnpikes. We're just gonna be wrapping our way going, paralleling Manhattan. A little bit of traffic right now, but we are about to cross the bridge over to Long Beach Island. Welcome to Long Beach Island. And actually, it's a beautiful drive to get here, especially once you cross the bridge over to the island. If you look at the map, this is a really long and skinny island that parallels the coast of Jersey. I think a lot of people come here during summer for vacation. There's a lot of summer homes. There's some huge mansions. There's marinas. There's boat harbors. There's beaches. And there's Kubels since 1927. All right, welcome to Kubel's. And we're here definitely to try their clam chowder, as well as their fried, fried clam strips and uh, steamed clams as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, chowder. Thank you. Food has all arrived. We decided to get everything all together, starting with the clam chowder, and then also we got some of their steamed clams. You got the grilled tuna salad, and then I got the fried clam strips. Okay, but let's start with the, the clam chowder. Wow, that is extremely thick. Potatoes in there, small pieces of potato. You smell the aroma of the clams. Mm. 
Wow, that is full cream, extremely thick, a little bit almost sticky. I like how the potatoes just kind of melt into the, it's almost gravy texture, but I love how the potatoes just melt into it, the flavor of the clams. The butteriness, I'm gonna add a little pepper to this. Okay, now for the clams. I'll pick up one of those clams on the on the half shell. And the best thing about it is you can scoop up all of that sauce, which is I think a combination of clam juice, butter, lemon, and maybe parsley. Mm. Oh yeah, that is buttery, fresh clams. So good, with just a little bit of parsley chopped up in there to give it that aroma. Could add some more lemon to this for sure and it would be even better. It's almost like butter and cream sauce. And finally for the fried clam strips, you can see they're breaded and extra deep fried. Those look so crispy. And then there's fries all on the bottom of there mixed within. There's three different sauces to choose from. There's a tartar sauce, there's a cocktail sauce, there's some kind of a like looks like a mayonnaise Thousand Island kind of sauce. I really love the cocktail sauce. Mm. Oh yeah, the clam strips like that are almost like squid. It has a kind of a little bit of a chewy texture. The flavor of the clam is a little bit mellowed out, a little bit neutral, but really crispy, really good. Especially with that cocktail sauce, I love it. Oh, the fries are amazing. I love how they keep the skin on the fries. They're thick cut, they're crispy, they're starchy and gooey on the inside. Try that tartar sauce this bite. That's good too, but yeah, I'm more of a cocktail sauce kind of guy. How's your grilled tuna salad? Good? There's walnuts. There's already a dressing on there, but there's also some dressing on the side, but that looks good. Mm. Oh, that's good. The dressing is a little bit sweet, but the, the fish, the tuna is nicely charred, nicely smoky, very fresh. I think that breadstick is just made for sopping up that juice at the bottom. And it's not, it's not as lemony as I, or maybe not lemony at all. Like I thought it was gonna be, it's more of like a, a broth, clam broth, with butter and parsley. Mm. It's the best thing on the table, without a doubt. That garlic, that parsley. a great family restaurant, the type of restaurant you would for sure come here annually, traditionally with your family if you're here for the summer hanging out. Great food, especially loved those steamed clams. From here, we're just gonna quickly stop by at the lighthouse, which you can actually see right there in the distance. We'll go get a closer look at the lighthouse. Barnegat Lighthouse, which is also sometimes referred to known as Old Barney, built in 1857 to 1858 by Federal Lighthouse Board. The plane of the light is 172 feet above sea level. We're at the very tip, at the very north end of Long Beach Island here. Definitely a beautiful area, and it's actually a state park on the New Jersey historic route. So beautiful area just to walk around and just to enjoy the history of Old Barney. And we are on our way, continuing on the Anthony Bourdain food trail. Next stop, Atlantic City.
welcome to Atlantic City and we're gonna be here all of tomorrow so we're gonna explore more and I'll take you to see more things around Atlantic City tomorrow but today we've arrived here in the evening we are going straight to one of the most iconic historical restaurants in Atlantic City it's called the Knife and Fork Inn talk about a restaurant with character now that is a unique building there's knives and forks on the walls. And so I have a reservation at 5 p.m. We're gonna go inside and I'm not totally sure what we're gonna order, but this is the meal I am most looking forward to today. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Very good, thank you. What a classic restaurant since 1912. Tonight. Very good, thank yeah. you very much. I'm Susie, I'll be taking care of you. Thank you. What an iconic, a landmark of a restaurant since 1912. And the bar was just completely full packed. Uh, we're here just in the late afternoon, it's 4.30, almost five now. Love the dining room, open window to the kitchen, everything classic about it you can imagine. Menu, there's everything from a variety of local seafood to steaks and lamb and short ribs and prime rib. And then our waitress mentioned that the special for tonight is a bison tomahawk. I've never had a bison tomahawk. It's a little bit on the pricey side. The bison. The bison, please. So awesome. And temperature on your bison? Medium rare. Perfect. And then also, could we get the pan roasted halibut? A multi grain, please. Thank you very much. Now, when you think about a restaurant that's been around since 1912, that's been continuously operating for 110 years, think about what this restaurant has been through, the ups and downs of Atlantic City, through the world wars, the people that have sat in this dining room, and the stories that could come out of this restaurant. That's when the history and since 1912 starts to really be meaningful. Oh, you put that steak up there? Okay. Here, that's the sear. Okay. That's it. Well, it's probably pretty uh, spacious. Yeah. So you can put the steak on the I think I forgot about this. This is something you want to watch and just watch him do how, they, okay. how they're going to finish this. But, yeah, just, this is the palm souffle? Okay. This is, uh, this is classic, one of the signature dishes? French cuisine done for hundreds of years and uh, yeah, we're still doing it. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I got to try this. I better order it. Yeah, we'll send you some. No, you don't have to it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so it's thinly sliced potatoes, which are then deep fried and continuously he shakes them. Now the, the key is to deep fry them in two different temperatures. A lower temperature to get them going and uh -huh. get that outside sear, and a higher temperature, which will cause that sear to have some steam on the inside. The sear will catch all that steam and inflate it like a balloon. That's amazing. So that's something you also have to order when you come to the Knife and Fork Inn. So then they're finished off in the deep fryer, or that's a hotter temperature. That's what causes them to inflate to these like puffy, crispy potatoes. Oh, they're gonna be so good. And he just continuously like the bathes them like the in oil. Chip that you're lucky to find in the bag that's inflated. Yes, um, yes. But here, you get a whole, whole platter of it. They're not right less than that
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, chef. Oh, amazing. Palm souffle. Thank you, chef. Oh, there they are. Those are spectacular palm souffle. The puffed up, ballooned potatoes. This might be the first time ever I'm more excited to eat potatoes than the, the steak. Well, actually, okay. I'm excited to eat them both, but we gotta start with that palm souffle right now as it's hot out of the oil. They're hollow, they're transparent, they're beautiful. So incredibly thin, transparent, puffy, crispy, air-filled, hollow. It's just an entire bouquet. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a little bit salty. It's puffy. It's, oh, that's incredible. It's like a giant hollow french fry. Oh, that's all things good in a single potato that you could possibly want. Mm. Oh, it's just, I'm speechless. That's one of the most delicious uses of a potato that I've ever had. And then moving on to a bison tomahawk steak. This is probably not the right place to pick it up and take a bite, but just had to pick it up just to, to show you how beautiful it is in the juices. Look at that. But I will set it down and definitely use the knife. It is so incredibly juicy. And they finish it off on a 1200 degree plancha, a hot plate. Should we just cut into this? Oh, you can feel the crispiness of the exterior. I ordered it medium rare. Oh wow, that is cooked perfectly. Look at the juices, the mix of fat and meat. Oh wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. It's so tender, it's so juicy. That mix of fat, that caramelized crust, you can taste the naturalness of it. The grass-fed, roaming flavor. Oh, it's just so natural, it's so good tasting. Oh, and they cooked it perfectly for me. I love it. And so bison, I believe it has a little stronger of a, a meatier taste of it, but just, just slightly. It's still very neutral. It's very natural tasting. Ah, oh, it's just so... So incredibly flavorful. I think it's a happy birthday. Okay, let's try the halibut next. Which was pan seared. And I think that's a variety of corn and pesto on the bottom, which looks delicious. Wow, that's a thick cut. Mm. Oh, that's amazing too. Oh, wow. The size of that piece of fish, the thickness of it, the beautiful crunchy crust on the top, that aroma of sweet corn, the basil in there from that pesto. The refreshing tomatoes, it's delicious. Mm. And back to this beautiful bouquet. Those are spectacular. That's the very end of the steak. Look at the juicy fatty, yeah, this is one of the better steaks I've had in a very long time. I mean, I don't eat that. I don't eat steak that often, I guess. But wow, that's so flavorful, so natural. Maybe add a little bit of pepper to this bite. I like it with a little bit of pepper too. Perfect. That is insanely juicy, insanely flavorful. The steak also came with these 
I think they're like corn fritters. Yeah, you can see the, the corn in them. Mm. Really taste the sweet corn. The, I think the chives or the green onions in there. And they're kind of doughy. Oh, those are really good too. With those, I think they have some caramelized onions on the side as well. It's like a sweet caramelized onion puree. It just melts in your mouth. Oh, you taste bacon in those onions. <laughs> I can tell you right here that this is the highlight of the day, hands down. The food is spectacular, service outstanding. The history here, the quality. I love everything about this place. The halibut is also incredible. So the tomahawk steak was quite pricey, $115, but oh man, it was worth it. The bison tomahawk, 28 ounce bison tomahawk. Oh, what a meal to finish off day one of this Anthony Bourdain New Jersey food trail. The knife and fork in. That was spectacular. Today has definitely been an interesting day. Like the guy also mentioned, I have zero experience in New Jersey. This is my first day to ever spend in New Jersey. And it definitely has its own attitude, its own culture. People are proud to be from New Jersey. It's been a very fun day. It's been a learning experience and it's just been absolutely awesome to go to some of Anthony Bourdain's favorite restaurants and we still have more to come. So like I said, there's going to be 10 places that we go to on this New Jersey food trail. We've, we've done three and then there'll be two more days, so two more videos. So again, make sure you relax, make sure you sit back. Now would be a great time to go grab a snack and then let's go on to day number two where we have a lot more food to eat. We have some diners to eat at and then we're going to explore Atlantic City more. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click the little bell icon so you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Atlantic City, New Jersey, and I will see you on the next video.